Commercial fisheries and seabirds both depend on the ocean for their livelihoods and often share the same rich fishing grounds. Throughout the world's oceans, seabirds gather in the hundreds to thousands around fishing operations to feed on discarded fish and bait. In longline fisheries, this can be a fatal attraction. As the gear is deployed, seabirds feed from the baited hooks, which can snag them, and as the gear sinks, they drown. Seabird raids on baits also result in fewer baited hooks, and consequently, fewer fish are caught. Longline seabird mortality is a conservation crisis on a global scale. Hundreds of thousands of seabirds die in longline fisheries each year worldwide. This mortality has been linked to declines in seabird populations. Of the 24 albatross species worldwide, all but four are at risk of extinction. To help save seabirds, the United Nations, through the Food and Agriculture Organization, calls on each longline nation to assess its seabird bycatch and to develop solutions to this problem. Seabird populations can be easily pushed into decline due to low reproductive rates. For example, albatrosses are long-lived, up to 60 years or more. They breed late in life at 5 to 12 years of age, and the mate they choose is for life. It takes several years for a new pair to successfully produce a chick. Only one egg is produced every year or every other year. If one adult is lost at sea, the chick rarely survives. The single adult may find a new mate, but it can take several years to do this and successfully breed. Of the young produced in any year, fewer than half will live to see breeding age. Seabird catch varies tremendously by vessel and area fished. Despite the fact that hundreds of seabirds typically surround a longline vessel, some boats catch few to none while others may catch hundreds. If each of the 2,000 vessels in the Alaska fleet caught only 10 birds on average, this could lead to a total catch of 20,000 birds per year. Extrapolating beyond Alaska fisheries to the thousands of longline vessels fishing the world's oceans quickly yields hundreds of thousands of seabirds potentially lost to longlines. Responsibility for clean fishing comes down to each vessel. Ultimately, longline fishing will be judged by its worst performers. Take responsibility for your vessel. It matters. In Alaska, from 1993 to 2001, seabird catches averaged just over 15,000 birds per year. The largest take reached 26,000. Ninety percent of the birds were taken in the Bering Sea Aleutian Islands area, where over 80 percent of the Alaska longline effort occurs. Three quarters of the Alaska takes were northern fulmars and gulls. The population status of both is poorly understood. Fulmars, or sea pigeons, are a stocky, thick-necked bird about the size of a small gull. They have a heavy, multi-plated pale bill and are either dark or light in color. Shearwaters account for less than 3% of the Alaska total. They are a dark-colored, slender bird with a dark, narrow bill. They tend to hold their slender pointed wings in the air as they sit on the water. Although shearwaters number in the millions, several breeding populations are in drastic decline. Like elsewhere in the world, albatross bycatch is at the core of the seabird conservation issue in Alaska. Almost 7% of the seabirds taken in the Alaska longline fisheries are albatrosses. All three albatross species breeding in the northern hemisphere are caught in Alaska longline fisheries, laysans, shorttails, and blackfoots. 
The short-tailed albatross is listed as endangered under the U.S. Endangered Species Act, and Blackfoots and Laysan breeding populations are in decline. In the late 1940s, short tails were declared extinct. They suffered from decades of direct harvest of both the eggs for food and the birds for the feather trade. However, a remnant population managed to survive, and with protection continues to increase. Over 1,600 short tails are now estimated to exist. Most breed on Torishima Island, an active volcano 300 nautical miles south of Tokyo. Short tails migrate directly to Alaska waters after breeding. Since 1995, five short-tailed albatross mortalities were documented in Alaska. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service requires that no more than four short tails be killed every two years in the ground fish fisheries, and two every two years in the Pacific halibut fishery. If these numbers are reached or exceeded, all longline fishing in Alaska could be interrupted or closed for a period of time pending action by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the National Marine Fisheries Service. Short tails are easy to distinguish from other albatrosses because of their large size and bubblegum pink bill. They are almost twice the body size of Blackfoots or Laysans. Young short tails have a uniformly dark plumage. The bill of a new bird turns from dark gray to bright pink within two months of leaving the colony. So the pink bill is probably always present in short tails seen in Alaska. As short tails age, the dark plumage turns white starting on the belly and gradually extending to the face, neck, head, and wings. Older breeding birds have a white body, light underwings, and a golden crown. Both black-footed and laysan albatrosses are easy to identify because feather color stays the same throughout their lives. Blackfoots are dark brown throughout their bodies, including upper and lower wings, and have a distinctive white halo at the base of a dark bill. Laysans have a white body and neck with dark upper wings, light underwings, a pale bill, and a distinctive dark smudge around their eyes. Because young birds roam the seas, returning for the first time at three to five years of age, you are likely to see albatrosses in Alaska waters throughout the year. Laysan and black-footed albatrosses forage thousands of miles from their breeding colonies in Hawaii while raising their chicks. Both make trips of about 10 days to five weeks to different feeding grounds. Laysans to the Aleutians in the Gulf of Alaska and Blackfoots to the Northern California to British Columbia coasts. Concern is growing regarding the population status of Blackfoots and Laysans. Numbers of both at breeding colonies are declining. Blackfoots are of particular concern. Extensive longlining by many nations throughout the Pacific is one of the likely causes. 